Okay, seven mizvot la Rambam. So the, the Rambam's um, introduction, so to speak, the seven, to his listing and explanation on mizvot is more than just an introduction. It is a um, comprehensive list of 14 principles upon which he bases his decision-making as to what should be considered a mizvah and what's not. What makes the cut? By what standard is something called a mizvah? Hachamim and the Gemara told us there are tariyak, 613 mizvah, did not list them for us. And therefore, great scholars Hachamim afterwards, which followed both in the time period of the Geonim and the Rishonim, had to figure out on their own. Obviously, many are obvious, but many are not. So the Rambam differed, for instance, with the Bahag, the Baal Halachot Gidolot, predecessor of his from the Geonim, as to which are the 613. Um, so the Rambam Go has developed 14 principles with which he, he used them to decide what is considered a mizvah and what is not. They're rules, they're standards. So we are not going to go through them in this class. It's it's comprehensive and, and, and very nice reading uh, for anyone who wants to do them on their own. We're going to start from the first Mizvat Aser. And in the new English Hebrew books that were given out, that is page 110. So we're start on page 110. we we'll go on pace from Monday through Thursday. And uh, attempt in the next 12 weeks to finish the Mizvat Aser in this class for Azat Hashem. B'shem Hashem Na'asev Na'asliyah, we start with Mizvah number one. Uh, and here it is. And by the way, the, the Rambam uh, categorizes Mizvot thematically. And as you'll see, his first grouping of Mizvot are really me mental Mizvot. They're Mizvot of a uh, person's mental dedication to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Mizvot of faith. And you'll see how there's a consistency in, in that grouping. So the first mizvah number one uh, seemingly should be the most important mizvah in those mizvot of faith. And it is, believing in God, believing that there is a uh, God. There is an existence and a, an, a, an originator and a reason um, behind everything that exists. And po'el means created here, and as we're going to see, also means perpetuates. There is a creator um, from which everything around us in this earth and in this universe came, and which also continues the existence, perpetuates the existence of everything. There is a God. Vehu Amaro, the Rambam always will bring us the source in the Torah, the Pasuk, which is the source for that Mizvah. And here it is, Anochi Adonai Rohecha, which is the first of what we call the Aser HaDeberot. The unusual thing is that that does not sound like a command. It just says, I am Hashem, the Lord your God. It doesn't seem like it's commanding us of something. The Rambam will, will prove how it is. And he brings Torah Shiba'ape, he brings Statements both from the Gemara and the Midrash Halakha, always, not, not always, when necessary, to um, back up the fact that any given Mizvah is the source, any given Pasu is the source for any given Mizvah. So here he has, Ubasov Gemara Makot. This is the source for the number. Amru. Taryag Mizvah Nemru Moshe Bishinai. There's a Gemara Masikha Makot that speaks about the 613 Mizvah. Ma'ekhara'a, Gemara asks, from where in the Pasuk can you derive this? Torah sevalano Moshe. How does that tell you 613 Torah is 611. Torah, God, uh, Hashem commanded, or Moshe commanded us, or taught us. But the Gemara is really asking, only 611. It's only 611, the Gemara asked. They answered the Gemara. 
The answer was that Torah Sivalano Moshe, the 611, the numerical value of the word Torah, is what Moshe commanded us. But Anochi and Lo Yihyeh, which is the first two of the Aser HaDeberot, Am Yisrael heard directly from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu, so we didn't need Moshe. Hashem was our rabbi directly. What do you? What, what's one of the of the take of the takeout, the take home, takeaways that you get from that exchange in the Gemara? That Anuchi Hashem Elohecha is the mizvah, right? Because those are of the two that Hashem taught them, but they're being counted as six eleven plus two equals six thirteen, and therefore you see that Anuchi Hashem Elohecha. Indeed, is a mitzvah. And again, and it is indeed the mitzvah to believe in a God. The second mitzvah. Now, believing in God is one thing, but believing in the oneness of God is a separate command that Rambam tells us. To believe that this God, who is the originator and the creator for everything that exists, is singular. From where, where is the source? Many sources you'll find Hachamim saying about this pasuk. What does it mean, understand Israel, that Hashem is our God? Hashem is one, meaning that Hashem is our God on condition that we will treat him as one. Amenad liyahedeni, the Rabbim Ke'ele, other similar Midrashim that express the same sentiment. V'rosim ba'zeh ha'ma'amar, anachnu ha'umnam husi'anu me'abdut, ba'asa'a ma'anu ma'asha'asa'a min ha'asadim ve'atobor. But the real intent of Hachamim from these say statements as if to tell us, listen, God has brought us out of Egypt. He has bestowed upon us the kindness and the goodness that he has. All on condition that we believe that not just he is a, but he is he, it, the only God. Because we're obligated to this. So that's really what the lesson the Hakimim are trying to extrapolate from that pasu. And that is that everything about him being Elokenu was done with the assumption and on condition that we would accept him as Ehad, as one, a singular. Right? And that will refer to this Mizvah as the Mizvah of singularness. It's also called the yoke of heaven. That Hashem is asking you to accept him as singular in order so that you can be subjugated, subject yourself to God. And that's called Mafut Shemaim, yoke of heaven. And that amounts to acknowledging the singularness of God and believing it. So you have the mizvot of faith, the primary, there is a God, and then there is that God is singular. Mizvah Gimal, the third mizvah Aseh. Commanded us to love him. That we should contemplate his mizvot, his statement, and his activities, his actions, which means his creations. To the extent that we'll be able to grasp and understand, and that will be so pleasing to us, to the to the extent to the extent that we'll want to love him, and that really is the source of the obligatory love. In other words, you have this God, you believe he's one, you contemplate what he is, what he's done. We don't know his essence, but we can understand what he's done, what he's done for us, what he does in the world, what he's created. The more we contemplate, 
and understand that it sinks in, the more that's very pleasing to us, the more we, we are, we're deriving benefit from that understanding. That organically is love. It's not romantic love. It's not love on condition. It's love based on an understanding of who he is and how much we appreciate that existence will organically cause love. Belashon Sifre, the Midrash says as follows. The Torah commands us, and you shall love God, right? That's in Kiryat Shema, but that doesn't tell us how. How does that look, loving? It's not like loving someone. Ah, the next pasuk reveals it, says the Midrash. The words of Torah that I'm commanding you today should be you should be taking them seriously and connecting with them. You want to know how to love God? Then the next pasuk. The next pasuk is the Torah and all its contents should be you should learn, you should understand, you should take seriously, you should sink in. Ah, that then will be what produces love. So love then is not something that you can like force upon yourself. You need a prerequisite to love. You need to have your share of education, uh, contemplation, understanding, and that brings about the love. The Rambam says this as a chain reaction. The contemplation will bring understanding, which will bring our happiness and, and, and pleasure from that understanding, which will lead to definitely, he says, love. That's what starts from education and understanding. Included in love is recruiting other people to worshiping God and believing in him. This is very logical, by the way, because when you love a person, you often compliment him, even in public. And encourage other people to gravitate and benefit from this person. When you really appreciate someone else when you and you start to speak about him, you end up getting others to love him. That's the analogy. really love God, so too. When you, when you begin to grasp the essence of God, or as much as you can understand him, so without a doubt, you're going to have a desire to start explaining to those that are less educated and fortunate than you, who don't have as much as an understanding, to know the truth like you know the truth. You'll want, you'll, the truth will be spilling over. Will be, you'll be exploding with truth and with knowledge of God that you want to spread that wealth and that understanding. That's part of love of God is spreading the love. Also, the Midrash says when the command of love means make others love. Like uh, your father, Abraham Avinu. Uh, the Torah tells explicitly that Abraham Avinu recruited other people to the understanding of God. Just like Abraham Avinu understood God um, and with, from all his love recruited others to do the same uh, and to love him, you should do the same as well. That's the point and uh, the intention of that Midrash and that is the full definition that Abraham gives us of the love of Hashem. Amen. Amen.